Hi and everybody. We're deeply honoured to be joined, of course, Mary, with our special guest, Boo Ray. Perry, I hope I got that right. You got it right. Good yeah. job. Yeah. The bay now, before we come on, I'm saying I'm totally confused. It's like my name, people never get it right. So I know how you feel. So, and deeply honoured, come on and say hello. And I'm going to pass straight over to Mary and, and Boo Ray to get started with this. And then I'll come in at the very end and sum up. So happy conversation. Pint of black Guinness, remember that sweet okay. stuff. Okay. In the yes. hand, just have some fun. Okay. Awesome. All right. All right. We're going to have some fun for sure. There's no doubt in my mind that we will not have fun, B-Ray. Okay. Have we now, ever now not had fun? <laughs> fun. Can, we, can we talk about how foul a pint of black Guinness is? <laughs> he, might as well, he, might as well be, he might as well be telling me he's going to come in with a glass of pond water at the end of the <laughs> I oh. think you're the only one that has had the nerve, because all of us are like, black, oh, and we're all like, Guinness. we I'm are guessing. like, Oh. We're American people. We don't drink black Guinness. We don't. No, no, no. But yeah, I get it. It's like coffee. No one, yeah. no, one has, no one has their first sip of coffee and goes, oh, that's delicious. True. You have to or beer in force, general. Yeah, beer or in beer general, in general, really. right? And I'm, I'm guessing that if I grew up drinking this foul <laughs> concoction from Harry Potter uh, that he is drinking, that I would probably like it. By <laughs> but uh, at this advanced age, I am not tasting that black sludge. And don't. No, I'm with you. No. I'm with you. Actually, when we were in Ireland, we we did go to like the Guinness factory. Like we went to the Guinness place. <laughs> and did you get and free Guinness? Was that like a thing? They we gave got you the free glass of Guinness, and it it does taste very different than what we drink here. I will really? I will give them that. Yeah, it, for some reason, I guess when they're making here, or just it's the water. I don't know what it is, but it Closer it was to the drinkable. Cow. It was drinkable. <laughs> it was drinkable, oh, it was drinkable there. Drinkable. Yes, right. it was. So I just don't, I just don't like the I don't like the way that the foam foam is supposed to be white, and yeah. foam on on black Guinness is like this dirty like like something you would find in your toilet when it was backed up. You know, it just it just it just does not look appetizing in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, <And> so, friends. <laughs> just saying. Like a black foam and a black drink. Yeah. Oh, no, it's just no. Yeah, it's it oh. is. It's it's an acquired taste, but yeah. I would drink it. I would drink all of it if I could travel again and go back to uh, Ireland and all these places that uh, we can't go. Ireland's supposed to be one of the most beautiful places in the world. It is. It is. I've I've only been. I think I've been three times. I was supposed to go this June. Didn't get to go. No. Didn't no. get to go. Mm -mm. No. I've seen. Oh, uh, I've seen a lot of when you. I've seen when you travel and you post the pictures on Facebook of like you traveling in your hermetically sealed pod on board the airplane <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what planes you fly on. Like I fly on a plane. They give us, I don't know if you've heard of these things. They're called seats. And they give us a seat. And then when you fly, there's some sort of like maturation chamber that uh, Michael Jackson, a <laughs> young or something that you're sealed into with things on your eyes and headphones. And then you wake up and you're in another country. Can I mute this man? What did I saying, sign up for today? <laughs> I've seen these. I mean, the, what, what airline was it? Cause you, you, you know what I'm talking about. You, you fly on those I airlines do. that has like the, the, like the, like the lovers pot. It looks like something <laughs> out of a horror movie. Like this is where we grow the clone army. What, like what airline was that? Oh my God! Stop it! It's just Delta. It's just it was a Delta. Area. It's different. It's a different area of Delta. A different area of Delta. Oh, <laughs> well, what first of all, exactly? international international flights they have right. different areas. Right. Well, I mean, I I just didn't know that they had those on American planes. I thought those were reserved for, like the Sultan of Brunei. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then it's I saw. Just Delta. I saw that you had it's flown. Delta. Oh. Well, I fly enough that I get upgrades sometimes. That's what he's talking about. It's an upgrade, right. like Delta One or something like that. Right. And it is nice. When we flew to South Africa, I was never so grateful in all my life to have that little pod. Oh, God, yes. Absolutely. I, the, the older you get, the more uh -huh. you're willing to pay for comfort. Let me tell you that right now. You, That's you absolutely. I'm like, you upgrade. It. How much is going to cost to upgrade me to the nicer totally bed or it. the nicer seat? <laughs> Absolutely yeah. worth it. How much is it that I don't have to sit on somebody else practically? <laughs> yes, I, I will pay for. Yeah, I will pay for comfort. I've spent much more money on shoes now than I ever did when I was younger. Too. Yeah, because of the comfort. The, yes, you gotta have, comfort. You gotta have the. You have to have the stability. Yeah, give the, me a really um, good structure. pair of shoes. I will pay yeah. good money for a really good pair of shoes or a good seat <laughs> on an airplane. I love that, and yeah, I'm I'm all about that. And it's also it, it, as you get older too. It's just everything at home is pretty daggone awesome. So. Am I going to go somewhere and be uncomfortable? 
Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm with you. People are like, let's go here for the weekend. I'm like, really? No. I live in Florida. My kids are like, let's go, let's go out of state for the, for the, for the vacation. And I'm like, um, we live 30 minutes from the beach. We have a pool, air <laughs> conditioning and, a, and, and restaurants and everything else here. Where do you want to go? Where, right. where are you going to go that's better than where we live? True. You're in so Tampa, we, we, right? So we don't, yeah. So I, we don't take many vacations. I think we go to the mountains, I guess. Yeah, that would be nice. If but you I'm want like, to see snow. I tell my kids, I'm like, we, we live next to Disney World. Everybody wants to come here. Why do, yeah. why do we, why do we want to go somewhere? That's the great Which thing Which is about why living. Florida's doing so well right now is everybody wants to come to Florida. That's yes. the problem. You want well, us to stay out of Florida. Yes, please do. <laughs> Just stay please away not, from Florida for a please while. Please do not come to Florida. So let's, let's dig in, sir. So yeah, you may have noticed a little bit of a, little bit of a pandemic going on. It's been going on for a while. Yes. Um, excited to talk to you today. And mostly because I think that, um, well, you're funny as hell. I mean, that's just, and I love talking to you, but how, because you're, you, a lot of what you do, most of what you do in your studio is events, weddings, bar about mitzvahs, that type thing. So yeah, headshots, portraits, I do everything. Right. Yeah. Everything. I guess you're, I know you so well for your events and your weddings and bar yeah. events, because that's probably why, I, you know, I think when I think of you, that's what I think of. So how have you pivoted? What are you doing? What are your thoughts on moving forward? Well, about um, three days a week, what I do is I curl up into a corner <laughs> and I cry. Just rock. With a pint of vodka. <laughs> with a, not Guinness. And I find, I find that that works. <laughs> very well to help me get over my marketing problems <laughs> oh my gosh i lost everything <laughs> when when uh in march i had every weekend scheduled i had a bar mitzvah yeah. every single weekend in march and then in one week i had four cancellations uh four postponements so all four of them postponed to later in the year uh one of them has now canceled um and i had a wedding that had canceled so i lost everything uh for the first two months of the pandemic i was just sitting here watching movies on Netflix like anybody else. There was just, there was nothing to do. Yeah. Uh, so uh, luckily I have been moving more and more into doing uh, portraiture and especially into doing corporate headshots. So I'm trying to get more of that out there because people are going back to work and they do need headshots. Yes. And yes. so I've been doing more and more of that uh, lately. Mm -hmm. But as far as marketing to events, it's a wait and see. There's right now that no one's going to call me up and book me uh, for an event six months from now. They're just right. not going to do it. They're waiting until, mm -hmm. they've got, until they've got word. So I've been tightening the, tightening the reins and trying to get headshot work, maybe a little senior mm -hmm. work. Uh, I shot, um, I shot a, a graduation and I shot graduation photos for a school. Uh, this Sunday, I will be shooting the largest homeschool uh, graduation ceremony in the state. Um, a friend of mine does it and uh, I help him every year with it. So they've done that and they'll make it safer. They broke it into two ceremonies okay. and they're doing dis distancing and all this, but I'll do probably 280 to 350 kids uh, in yeah. the course of maybe wow. five hours. It used to be, we did it in like an hour and a half. Right. Like, just rock them through there. Line them well, up. Not only do you have to walk them through, but we did it literally during the ceremony. Right. So okay. the kids came backstage, we took their picture and then they went on stage and got their diploma. So if you, you couldn't fall behind, you'd mm -hmm. be in the course of doing it and they would send you a signal like speed up. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. And you just got to go, you got to get them all. Uh, so uh, that got postponed twice. We were supposed okay. to do this months ago and that got postponed twice. So we're still doing that. Uh, but I know from having done it in the past, I don't come near anybody when I do this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm completely sure. safe over behind my tripod. So, um, so I did some of that and I did a graduation and I'm doing more and more headshots. Uh, but events, there's just not really much you can do. You can try and prepare for the future, update your website, uh, keep yourself alive on social media, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you know? Yeah. Cause when they all come back, which they will come back, we don't sure. know how they're going to, they're going to come back at some point, but you need to, I love what you said about, you know, update, get things done that have been on that to-do list, which gosh, I mean, didn't we all think that was going to happen? And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, what do you mean? We're going out of quarantine. I didn't even get to my list. I don't know what I was doing. I guess watching Netflix, like you said, but um, but you know, reposting or resharing things, giving valuable content, shareable content that just right. to keep your name out there and offering things like something that I think is really cool right now is if you, you know, have a great social media presence is 
because parents are dealing with this, whether to send kids back to school and what's going on, you know, here in the U.S. and, and probably all over the place. But, you know, offering great, valuable content for families that are going to e-learn or homeschool or anything you can do to share something with your, your community that's helpful. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, and branding is so important. I mean, I'm the worst person to ask about marketing. That's why when you asked me to be on the show here, I was like, really? I just marketing? love you. I, I, I knew you'd be worst, great. I'm the world's worst marketer uh, because <laughs> I, I really am. I mean, you are like a guru for marketing, but I'm Well, not. I only ask people that I can feel superior to. So. There you go. That's a good plan. <laughs> That's a very good plan. Wow. I should have thought of that before I got married. This I'm a marketer. It would save me a lot of trouble if I had done that. If I had, if I had married somebody who, did, who wasn't superior to me, that would have been... <laughs> So much easier for me. Well, yeah. Well. But branding is so important. And and I was talking to the superior person who I'm married to today about that. Uh -huh. And I said, and I'm like, I'm I don't my marketing has been all over the map ever since I started. And she said, No, she says the, the thing that you've always been consistent about, about has been your branding. She goes, Your name is known in our community, and anyone who hears your name instantly knows photographer. They hear right. Yeah, you know, and I'm lucky because I have a really weird name. Uh, but I, that's been very, that's, that's been a self-conscious thing for me. So if you're not doing that with your business, now is a good time to do it. People should think of you or your name anytime they think about anything having to do for, with photography. And you're going right. to push that out through social media. You're going to push it out through context. Um, you know, I, I was, I was thinking about today. I was like, what am I going to talk about when it comes to marketing? What's my secret? And honestly, my secret has always been to promote myself endlessly. Okay, you nailed it. No, I, you and nailed you do the it. the same and thing. You're like, everybody you meet, you're like, hi, I do, I do family. Yes, you know? uh, you're exactly right. But that you are your brand. Yeah, I am. And my you're brand. right. Your name, your name is your, that your name, that's a, it's a very lucky, you're not going to forget that easily. You know, right. it's like my husband's six foot seven. When we go anywhere, I might as well be invisible. A, I right. could fit in like his pocket because <laughs> not really, but I mean, I'm so like short in my family, but like he's, nobody forgets my husband because he's tall. He's got a very distinguished look. People always remember him. Me, they're like, huh. In my, you know what I mean? Now, or like when we first started get, dating and getting married, now it's my name, my, my business. And they're like, right. oh, photographer, right, right. But you are, you're incredibly engaging and friendly. You're funny, which is like the number one, that's like my number one want and need in life is to have more funny people in yes. my life. But, but you're talented, you deliver. Like, I can't imagine someone needing you and being like, nah, I'm kind of on the fence with that guy. You know oh, what I mean? Lots of people are on the fence, believe me. Lots of, <laughs> believe me, I get, I get tons of rejections. Uh, but, uh, but that surprises I, me. What I figured out early on was that it's, a, it's going to be much easier for you to sustain. If you're a new photographer, it's going to be much easier for you to sustain a long and, and fruitful career. If you lean in to who you are and mm -hmm. don't run from who you are and don't, and this is again, all opinions expressed by Bure Perry on this broadcast are his own and do not reflect right. management. But, <laughs> um, but I started off with the whole, you know what? I'm gonna have a website that's gonna be like, oh, and my passion is this and all the, cause I've seen this on all the other websites. And then I realized they're gonna read this and then they're gonna come meet me and I am not going to reflect what they are seeing on my website. So yes. I rewrote my website and I made it more about me and I made it more funny and I put jokes in it. And I was like, I want them to know that this is who I am. And then when they come to meet me, I get to reinforce that brand with them. And right. by the time they leave after meeting me for the consult, they really have a good idea of who I am. And if you want somebody to hire you to follow them around for seven hours, including three hours in their dressing room right. on the day that they get married, they need right. to like you. They hundred percent. They absolutely got to like you. I mean, you can get away with being all just pure professional if you're just doing headshots for 15 minutes. But if you're going to be doing event photography, if you're going to be there all day for the bar mitzvah, all day for the, then they need to like you. It is better to be liked than it is to be good. A hundred percent. No, you're you know, right about I'm that. I'm not that good. <laughs> no, you are. It took me you are. What did it take me? Six years to get my master's degree. I am not that. I am not a you know world renowned great photographer. But what I am is people like me. And mm -hmm. now, don't you find, especially with the new generation, the younger generation now, the experience is is at least as important as the product. Oh, a hundred percent. They've got 100%. to have a good experience with you. They've got to have fun you, with you. They've got to feel comfortable. You also, you're, and the, you also, I think, nailed, nailed it on something that's incredibly important is the authenticity. Because your brand, you, it, because you didn't go with the, 
the norm and I don't, I'm not saying it's not the norm and it maybe is more now, but when you started the norm of, well, I like, you know, the hot coffee and cute shoes and whatever mine probably still says. And you went with, this is who I am. You know, this is genuinely who I am because there's nothing more off putting and there's nothing worse for a brand than for them to meet you and be like, wait a minute, what in the heck? Yeah, this isn't even not, remotely the what, same person. That's not what I was expecting at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't know. You want them to absolutely meet you and go, you're exactly what I expected. Yeah. And you can't, um, and, and for me anyway, I get most of my business now from referrals from past clients. And let me tell you, <laughs> if you don't want to join your local photography guild or your state organization or your national organization like the PBA, because there's a part of you that doesn't want to share your photography secrets with your competition. I hate to break it to you. There are no photography secrets. Okay. You, right. you, you have not invented the wheel. There's nothing that you're doing, nothing that you're shooting, no way that you're shooting and no way that you're marketing that hasn't been done and thought of before and isn't being done by everybody that you know. So just put that aside. And I can tell you, without doubt that sometimes in a given year, I might have as much as 20% of my business come directly from other photographers. Right. Because I have met trust so many you? and I've became friends with so many and they will, they will call me up or they will send me and say, Hey, I just got a referral. For, uh, someone just came to me for a wedding on this day and I'm booked. I'm sending them to you. Oh, I love that. You know, or I love that. Uh, Jeff Tashowski, who's on the board of directors of the PPA with you. He has mm -hmm. somebody way up there and wherever Jeff lives in Virginia. Is it Virginia? No. I'm in Virginia. Jeff's in New Hampshire, a little further. New Hampshire. I know you're in Virginia, but I yeah. he, he's closer. Mm -hmm. He's up in New Hampshire. Somebody who's up there who he's done their pictures for years is coming down here to get married uh, in Orlando. So he was like, oh, we sent him, gave him my name. Right, Perry. Yeah. So, you know, that sort of stuff pays off. Uh, so believe me, being a, being a one man show and a hermit unto yourself in this business is not going to help you. Right. And, you know, you're, you're much better off networking and making friends and, and making contacts. Like I'm working this Sunday all day for another photographer. Right. And that same photographer, when I was doing dance pictures and we had to change the schedule so that I had to do the last day of my dance pictures on the same day that I had to drive to Georgia to speak at a conference, mm. I called him up and said, can you please come in and do my last day of dance pictures for me? And he said, sure. There you, know, you go. I had to go. I had to go do a gig where I had to do uh, 300 headshots in two days at a convention. No problem. Mm -hmm. I call up another guy who's a PPA member and I say, Hey, can you come do this with me? Sure. You know, I love we, that. Yeah. We pay each other a decent little wage. We don't overpay. We don't underpay because it all comes back anyway. Uh, right. And in the course, course of a year, I work for them as much as they work for me. And right. um, it, it's just, it's, it's a, a very valuable way to, to get extra work and to build your reputation in the community. I, yeah, you're exact. Yeah, that and and I love the idea of and you know this because you're involved in your affiliate and PPA, of course. But just that networking and that you know, it's it's almost like I was thinking about this the other day, Bure, and it was like <clears throat> just I try to at least once a day go through my social media and like all of my uh, like people's posts, just like their posts specifically other photographers and businesses and the reason is is it feels good to get someone just you know and, and somebody somebody reached out and said why do you do that why do you like all the you know your competitors pictures and i'm like because they need a little love and that's you know if that's all i can do today then uh, you know what what is it hurting me to hit that little button and just say good job and good job for continuing to put yourself out there and good job for trying because it's not yeah. easy it's just not easy. There's so, more. There's more than enough work uh, to go around, and 100%. and the people who stick together, the see the people who play nice to each other, they're always going to rise above the lone wolves. I've known some lone wolves, and none of them are in business anymore. I, yes, and we the all ones, have. And, the, and, the, and those of us who made friends with each other and tried to help each other and look out for each other, not only are we all still in business, but we have friendships that will last a lifetime. Uh, I miss all my friends. I miss y'all. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you this, because you know a little bit about me and I know a little bit about you, but you know, people may be hearing this and I think it's such a great conversation. You, know, you I've always, you know, you are your brand and the authenticity piece yeah. and all of that. What do, what do you say to someone who says, yeah, but I'm, you know, I'm really an introvert and I, I just, I'm not like you. Like, I don't like being out and I don't really like it. And I'm, I'm an introvert. What do you say to those people? Excuse me. I, okay. Well, um, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one it depends on what kind of photographer you want to be i, I think that I, I would say if you're an introvert that it is going to be harder in the event world uh, right. because uh, you are by definition working at a party every saturday and yeah. and you know i'm 
I'm extroverted at the party. I'm having a good time. I'm dancing. I'm talking to people. Yeah. I'm, you know, having a good time. And they remember that. Um, if you're introverted and you want to do, I mean, I don't, and I don't know that field that well, but I, I would think that you could be introverted and be, say, a baby photographer. Mm -hmm. If you were an extraordinary baby photographer, you know, I mean, if you are, if you are so unbelievably good that the world will be the path to your door, you know, the old line about the better mousetrap, then you can be whatever you want to be. You know, sure. you can be, you know, you can be cranky and mean and whatever, if your work is just so unbelievably better than anyone else in the field. But unfortunately for most of us, that's never going to be the case. Right. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, yeah, right. that's never going to be the case. There's, there's a hundred photographers who can do what I do in my area alone, probably. And so I'm not going to win people over with the quality of my work. It's going to be my work is good. And so is B and C and D and E. And so then it's going to come back to, do I want to work with that person? Right. And it's I always really hit it off with that person. Yeah. It's always going to come back to, do I want to work with that person? And even if you're an introvert, you can still, I think, do a lot of things to make it easier, you know, make it, make it as easy as possible, have good customer service. You don't have to be like you, you say, wanting to be out there. I'm a shut in. I don't like to go. I don't like to go out. I don't like to market. I don't like to uh, to network that way. I'm a I'm an email marketer. What I'm right. really good at is when if you email me, I'm going to write you back an email that makes me just sound exciting and fun and so so interested in you. Mm -hmm. You know that's what I mean. You you know how I write that. I'm yes. gonna, I, you know when you get an email back from me and it's going to come back to you ten minutes after you filled out the form on my website. Hundred percent. Oh, right. I can imagine. I can. I can imagine that. Yeah. Because it's gonna. Really I, yeah, I get. A, I get a text. So you know. I don't care what I'm doing in the rest of the house or whatever. I get a text that goes, "Ding, you got an inquiry." I go straight to the computer. Dicka, 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 dicka. Hi. Thank you so much for contacting me. Yeah. Jokey, jokey, jokey. Here's some links to my website that are going to show you some things that might help you with your decision. Uh, I read somewhere. This is a nice little tip. I read somewhere that whenever you send a, a prospective client an email, you should include at least three links to your website that give them some sort of information. Oh, that's I just read, good. I read, I read that somewhere. They said that even if they don't, even if they don't hit the links, it puts in their mind that you are helpful to them and knowledgeable. That makes sense. That makes total sense. I love that. That's a great. So like, so totally write, a, so write a blog post. Like I wrote a blog post that says, um, uh, you know, like ten tips for having great pictures on your wedding day. Right. You know, things like keep, so link you know, to that. And like link keep the, to... Yeah, keep the, you know, keep the bedroom clean, you know, and, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. So I link to that and I link to one. And I, and this is a clever little trick too. I wrote an article, why does photography cost so much money? And so I wrote a, and so I wrote a little article that explains that there's a lot more. Oh, yay. Yeah. About it. And, and hey, you know, sure, you can have 10 people in your band who are okay musicians, but wouldn't you rather have Bruce Springsteen by himself? In this scenario, I would be Bruce Springsteen. I, I see that. Totally. <laughs> and so, you know, to give to, to put them on the idea and the right path of the idea that just because I may be more expensive than my competition doesn't mean I'm not worth that value. And you should right. be you should be after the value. You should be worried less about the money and more about the value. Um, so, you know, I put links like that in there and um, always ask them a question. End with a question. In fact, every right. email to a client should end with a question to prompt them to write back to you. Of course. Yeah. Because it's rude not to answer a question. Right. It's weird. If the last thing says, hey, what time would you like to step that appointment? Then they can't, they can't just ignore yeah. the email. They've got to write back. Even if they're going to write back and say, I don't want an appointment, they have to write back to you. Right. You know, so I, you, don't, you can be an introvert uh, in real life and an extrovert on social media and, you know, in email. Oh, I completely agree with that. Because I consider myself to be, most of the time, very much an introvert. You and I have had this conversation. Like, I know okay. you don't believe me. <laughs> Okay. I really am like okay. it's really hard <laughs> me sitting here talking to my friend Bure is not an issue yeah right but okay. me in a crowded room I'm like oh you mean like oh. say oh I don't know in the lobby of the hotel at the international <laughs> photographic competition where you're off in a, a side area holding court like uh, Queen Victoria With surrounded my by your surrounded With by your friends. secret pants laughing at your <laughs> And you're, and you're so telling ridiculous. stories about Gregory. Oh, no, no. Everybody's <laughs> laughing and having a good time. And I look in that room and I go, oh, that poor introverted person. It must be horrible to be her. You are not okay. introverted. The definition of an introvert is I don't like, I don't recharge by people. I recharge by being by myself. Like, I don't like, like, okay. I can do that. And then I'm exhausted. And then I have to go to my room and I will go hide in my hotel room until I can just recharge and then I'll go back out. But it's, I, I've, never, it's I've, ne I've never heard that before. That's, that's, yeah. that's fascinating. And, and I get that because I don't, I'm not, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, that's I'm why. Like, so, like the, 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 I am happiest when I'm in front of a group of people. Yeah, so I'm not. I, mean, I guess so. I'm an extrovert in that. Yeah, you are for yeah. sure. Yes. So let me ask you this. I I, I saw the the headshots you did. You did them on green screen, right? And that because I, think uh, I yeah, saw I them did. before I had and after to because they sent me a. They sent me like a two page, it's always fun when they send you like yeah. a two page write up of this is exactly how the headshots have to look. And yeah. you're like, and you're like, how come you're not hiring the guy who did these headshots to do them? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's There's that's probably a reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, so how did you pivot into that? I mean, not that you haven't always done it, but I mean, you're doing more of it, maybe even marketing or looking at doing more. Did you reach out to some of your past clients? Did you maybe some of the events you used to photograph for, did you kind of reach out and say, hey, let's update your branding? I mean, what did you yeah. do proactively to get some of that business? Well, some of the headshots came in because I do a lot of bar mitzvahs and a lot of my bar mitzvah clients are doctors and lawyers. Yep. And mm -hmm. so then, they, and again, if you make a good impression with them and they really like you, then they think of you. <clears throat> they say, hey, come to, our, uh, come to our office. And let me tell you, that, that referral network with weddings, but especially if, if you live in a town where there's a Jewish community and you're not uh -huh. doing bar mitzvahs, you are just leaving so much money on the table. You absolutely should be looking into doing bar mitzvahs because you do a bar mitzvah, uh, no one from a wedding ever comes in to pick up their album and says, oh, thank you so much. And by the way, I'm getting married again in a year. Right. Can you please send me a contract? for that and lock down mm -hmm. this date. And that happens mm -hmm. to me every time I do a bar mitzvah. When someone comes to me and says, oh, I have a bar mitzvah. And I go, who's this for? It's for our oldest child. And how many children do you have? Four. Cha-ching, <sighs> cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. That's four weddings. That's four <laughs> weddings right there. Yes, bar you know, mitzvah, bat mitzvah. I don't love the benais as much. I've, we had a few sets of twin you know, mitzvahs and it's like, I feel like I'm getting you know, double the work for- Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I give it to, but I'll do it because you can keep them happy, keep them happy, of course. keep them happy. And you and always can use a little family it. portrait in there. You always yeah. get a family portrait and in I there. Never, and I never advertise uh, in that community. I just do it all by word of mouth. And so yeah. as a result, over time, the last three people who came in and booked me, I said, how did you hear about me? And all three of them said, there's a Facebook group called Jewish Moms of Tampa Bay, and you're the most recommended photographer. And I was like, yes, that's that. There, no, no money in the world can buy you that. Mazel tov. Yeah, mazel. <laughs> mazel tov, Blu-ray. Mazel that's, tov. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, yes. yes. And, I know. I, I love it. Yay. And you're right. That yeah. isn't that you're exactly right. And Richmond's the same way. That you know, there are Jewish communities here, the, the temples, the synagogues here. You get in, you're in. You know right. what I mean? It's family. Right. You know yes, what I mean? Yes. I if, you do, if you do a good job, if you do a good job and you have good customer service and you seem to really care, which, you know big surprise that's do. the key to all great business isn't it and if you if you mm -hmm. just do what you're supposed to do that is a community that will reward you for it mm -hmm. um, exactly the other by, the, by the way the other community that's very good about rewarding you for it is the gay community the gay great. community will take good care of you it, it, you know and, and and other communities will too but but they 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 seek each other out a lot and they ask for advice and especially with barb mitzvahs because you don't know what you're doing but you know right. your friend barb uh, her kids just got bar mitzvahs last year and you went to that event and it was great so who did you use and they used the same dj and they used the same photographer and they used the same person to do the planning and you and so every saturday i go and shoot these events that that pay better than a wedding and yeah. i know everybody there i know all the vendors and there's at least two or three families at the event whose events i shot in, in you know in the past which is oh my god it's like going back home it's yeah. like going home week which has become yeah, a problem now it. because they'll see me and they'll go hey and i'll go hey and in my head i'm like i don't remember who is that <laughs> i know i must have shot your bar miss for four years ago but i don't remember uh and um it's just great it's just great business i don't remember what your question was my question was <laughs> pivoting to the headshots but yes so i got some that way that. yeah yeah. And then I, um, I bought a new domain. I bought headshottampa.com. And I built a separate website just for headshots. Oh, okay. Very much, geared, very much geared towards corporate work. And I, so if you go to my regular website, bureauperry.com, if you click on the headshot link, it takes you to okay. Headshot Tampa. And, and I did that to see if it would help with the SEO because I thought my normal website's got so much stuff on it that it's yeah. probably not going to show up very high in the headshot world. But if I have a, a, a dedicated website just for headshots with its own blog and everything else, then that might help me. And it is. I think I checked yesterday and I think I'm first page. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. For headshots so that in Tampa. Helps. That's genius. Yeah. So that, and, and, and also on that, I tried something. I, know, I don't know if it's working, but rather than just show like, um, here's my headshots and I take great, great headshots, I have a lot of 
pop up stuff on that shot on that thing that where I got statistics that show things like, you know, 95% of people uh, in business will see your picture before they ever meet you. Uh, right. you, know, you know, so that if you do come to my website, there's all these things that are going to convince you that your headshot is much more important than you think it is. And therefore, you should pick someone who's really good and also slightly more expensive. Because mm. you and I both know that if you're a realtor, someone will come to your office for $25 and take your picture. And, and right. it's going to be a horrible picture. But, you know, that's what they and do. And it shows. Right. And what I'm trying to do is, is educate people to the fact that in today's world, they're going to see your headshot before they ever meet you. Your headshot is your calling card. It yeah. is your first impression. It's it your virtual every- handshake. Yeah, it's your virtual hand. It's everything. And so it needs to be a good one. So spending a couple of hundred bucks on a really good headshot that you're going to use. I mean, come on. Well, <laughs> we use it for 10 years, right? Yes, you don't do. change your headshot as you get older and <laughs> uglier. <laughs> you, stay, you stay with it. And yes. um, so you get a lot of use out of it. So yeah. just convincing them that, that it's that good. And then also providing a lot of services to them. You know, you've got a convention. Great. I'll come in and shoot 300 people in one day. They'll be able to pick their headshot on site, select it, push a button. It'll immediately go to their phone. Love it. Right there. Wow. Yeah. You can, oh, you, you do that at your events. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. If you bring me into like a convention. Yeah. yeah you, that's I, how you there's do a, it. There's a, you, you, you tether into your laptop, mm-hmm. then um, right into, right into okay. uh, Lightroom right there. Then you, Lightroom pr- does a preset to the images to uh, do whatever you would normally do to them real quick. Maybe put a vignette on them or whatever. Uh-huh. And then sends them up the line to the cloud uh, where, to a service where I've got a tablet sitting on a table and they just walk over to the tablet and there's the pictures. And they go, I want this one and this one and this one. Send the email. They put in their email and it's in their phone about five minutes later. That's phenomenal. And they're, and they're done. They're out the yes. door. But not doing those events right now, but that's a really, that's a, right. that's an amazing service for yes. that. It's actually Fred Morton. Hey, Fred, he's here in Virginia. Um, and he's a big fan of yours when you were here in Virginia last, was it last summer? Summer, summer, last summer, I think you were here. Was it last summer that I was there? I think so. That was a good convention. We you and Richard. Time. You and yeah, Richard Sturman was right? there. It wasn't just um, me and Richard. There was somebody else. That was the one where I came in and took over your, your competition. Yeah, we loved it. We loved it. You were I just great. walked in and was like, let me judge. <laughs> I, I'll judge. Well, I want to judge. I was like, yeah, okay, you judge. I've had two glasses of wine. I should not <laughs> okay, be judging. To be fair, it wasn't, it wasn't an actual competition. No, it was a print critique okay. and you did a great job. Just like, you know, so it was, it was, I would never do that to an actual competition. But I when, when, I realized, when I realized that it was like, oh, everyone it was just like, you know, a round table. Let's all talk about that. I was like, oh, well, I want to be involved in that. That's you were great. awesome. It's such a great idea too. More people should do that. Yeah, we have, we hopefully have it coming up virtually this year. Of course, we won't be meeting in person, but we'll be doing it. So question for you. Um, he's Fred, Fred does a lot of event uh, as well, events as well, a lot of conventions. And he said one of his big um, conference clients just announced that their November conference will be virtual. Are you offering or doing anything for these type of virtual events? Fred, if you can come up with something I can do, to make- <laughs> please let me know. Because yeah. I have yet, I've yet to crack it. I, I don't know how to make money in a virtual conference anymore. I just don't know how to do it. I guess the only thing you could possibly do is send, ask them to put something in every, you know, every everybody's email uh, inbox. Something like, we can't, we can't be together, but when you're ready, maybe there's an offer for them to get a, new, a headshot with you. I don't know. Like there seems like if you're connected with them that maybe you could offer their conference attendees, assuming that they're local and I know they're not always, so I know this is all what ifs, but that there's a way that they could use you in the future. That's all I can think of. I I, I haven't thought of anything else. You know, we're in such strange new territory now that, yeah, uh, you know, (laughs) yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm waiting. I've got three bar mitzvahs that postponed for later this year. And I'm any day, every day I'm checking my email. I'm just waiting you know, for them finally to just say, no, nope, sorry, we're going to cancel. And of course, no one's booking. So I should be booked no. up. <clears throat> yeah, I should be booked up. November and December is usually heavily, heavily booked for me. And I'm not booked at all because nobody's, nobody's booking it. Nobody's planning it. So right. uh, it's a rough year all the way around. But headshots are helping to keep me afloat. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's a great business. It's, and it's, it's, it's somewhat recession proof because if you need a headshot, you need a headshot. I mean, you just, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like you have to do it. And, and I would think somewhat seniors too. I mean, I know that the senior business is rough. I get it, but guys, they're not gonna be able to go into schools this year. So there's going to be more need than ever for very quality controlled senior sessions just to get that yearbook picture or whatever. Like there's a lot of schools that aren't going to let the big photographers come in, or we don't know how that's going to look. So like, I know I booked one the other day and I'm doing zoom calls and I'm going over the protocol and I'm going over how we're going to do it and the safety, you know, cause moms, 
I would want to know, you know what I mean? And so I think you're going to see people using smaller photographers groups because they, they, they think they could trust us to be safer. I don't know, maybe, but we'll see. Yeah. I've got, I've got a senior session uh, next week. Yeah. yeah. On location. Yeah. yeah. And, and also it's very helpful if you can do location work because location work, I, if, if people are worried, they'll be less worried. If you say, I'm going to meet you in a park outside and I'm never going to be closer than 12 feet to you. Exactly. As opposed to, in my case, you'd have to come into my home to, yeah. to, to use my studio. And Small. that's, yeah, that's more, that's more likely to, to freak people out a little bit. So I, I'm uh, freaked out by it. I mean, I'm <laughs> trying not to do anything in my studio because our studio is tiny and I just, uh, I try not, I mean, we've done a few, but I'd much rather be outside. Plus I don't like cleaning everything, scrubbing everything down in between sessions. I mean, it's like, that's 45 minutes. Oh, sorry. Lucky sorry, no the dogs are, yeah, lucky the dogs are gonna all bark. I'm like, family, don't, between one to two, just be quiet. <laughs> I'm lucky no one's to come to the door. If the door, if someone comes to the door, it's gonna sound like the, the hounds of the Baskervilles. So oh, yeah. One dog, but man, the noise she makes when somebody comes. comes well, two kids home from college and they both brought a dog and we had dogs and it's, it's a kennel. I'm living in a kennel at this point. It's nice having the kids home though, right? Oh, it's so awesome. And yeah, my son was supposed to go uh, in a couple weeks to Germany to start his graduate school program, but he's deferred because they don't want us. <laughs> the Germans my don't daughter, want us there. My daughter's uh, high school band oh. was selected to march in the London New Year's Day. Uh, and we were all going. Uh, we, we were going to, the day this. after Christmas, we were all flying to London and we would be there for like 10 days. Yeah. And apparently the London New Year's Day Parade is like five times the size of the Macy's Parade on Thanksgiving. Wow. It was huge, very huge deal, like 60 bands, really big deal. And uh, my younger daughter was going to go uh, also because she was going to be in choir and the choir was going, the chorus was going. And so it was just a huge, huge deal. And we were starting to put away money for it and the whole thing. And then they just officially canceled it uh, this week. They did. Yeah. So we're hoping that next year they'll just say, you know what, we're going to invite all the same people back. Yeah. Um, that, you know, but the people who are like seniors and stuff, there, there's an entire generation right now that's going to be defined by this year. Uh, there is an entire generation that 20 years from now, they'll be talking to their friends and they'll be, what, what year did you graduate high school? 2020? Me too. And, and yeah. there'll be like a shared, there's like a shared, we were the class of 2020. We were the ones who didn't get to graduate. We were the ones who didn't get to go to college on time. We were the ones mm -hmm. who, you know, who didn't get to have the senior summer. We were the ones who mm -hmm. didn't, you know, there's a, the whole generation is going to be very much defined by this moment. I think a lot of things are going to be defined by this moment. Um, you know, and, and actually David Trust said this a couple weeks ago, and I think he, he nailed it. He said, this will forever be the year with an asterisk beside it. Yeah. The, you know, the MLB, the NBA, the NFL, college football. It, all the graduating, you know, classes, whether it's college or high school, like both of my kids had missed the head graduations that got canceled because I had one graduating from college, one graduating from grad school. And then my niece, it was her high school graduation. So we had three graduations in our family. We've been planning, Oh wow! you know, it's just, yeah. but it, you know, we're all there. I love the resilience. I love how, it, I mean, there were tears. Don't get me wrong. There was tears. There was some cuss words. There was some anger, but man, they have bounced back oh, so God, beautifully. Yes. My I mean, kids are like, oh, they're crying, they're upset. And then five minutes later, can we get yogurt? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it must okay. be nice to be 15, yeah, 16, okay. 17 years old. Uh, Leslie thing, Evans might... said something interesting. She said Mary might be an ambivert whose personality has a balance of extrovert and introvert right. features. Now, I've never been called balanced an in my entire an life. Am, an ambivert? Ambivert is what Leslie Evans I'm said. I'm an ambivert. I absolutely am. Okay. I, I have to register anytime I move. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I, I, am That's, I am. I like to be in front of people, but at the same time, I'm very much, I'm, I'm like, I'm going back to the room for a while. I'm just going yeah. to just sit, sit I on bet you. And, yeah, you are, you can also get very, I'm like, oh, maybe he's recharging his batteries because you're very not, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I almost made our background today. One of my favorite pictures is me and you on IPC Live and we're both going like this, but I have a white glove, so I look like a really weird Mickey Mouse we were kind doing of mine. <laughs> We were making jokes it about, the, the, about the It is the funniest picture. It is so funny. I'll have to post it somewhere because it's it's. Hilarious. I miss that. I miss IP. I really do miss IPC. I know. I miss everything. I just Doing Imaging USA Live is fun, but it's not the same. IPC Live mm -hmm. was much more, it was like this, you know, where we got to yeah. sit down and interview and talk to people and make jokes. And it was much more uh, casual. And uh, I, so. I did it for four years. And uh, I think last year was the first year that, that I, I didn't go to IPC and spend the whole time there 
uh, with the competition and with the judges. And I really missed it. I did. Yeah. I really, I really wanted to do it. So. And now none of us will be there. So we'll no. all just kind of be, huh, yeah. Um, so the pivoting part. So I love the fact that you got that website. And so you have that. So that's a, but it, so when you go into your main site, it's a, like they can go to that funnel. They yeah. can go to so I have two websites for my business, Blu ray Fair Photography, and then I have Headshot, or it might be Headshots Tampa. Uh -huh dot com but if you're okay. on my main site and you hit the link that says headshot it takes you to headshottampa.com and that site looks different than my main site radically right. different than my main site and that's a weird thing i was like hmm if you're on my website and you're looking around and you hit that suddenly it's a jolt of this is different um but then i thought i think most people coming to booreyperry.com aren't looking for headshots they're looking exactly. for events they're not gonna they're probably not gonna hit that button anyway but right. having that website the site be standalone means i can I can zero in the SEO specifically to headshots. And I think it helps it with this because I never had my headshot page on my old website track nearly as high as my pure headshot website does. And the same thing works with um, when I was doing beach weddings, um, we owned a beach wedding company, Perfect Florida Beach Wedding, and it had its own website. Uh, for, and so I got a, a slew of my beach wedding work through that website and not right. through my own. I, well, I got it, a lot of it because they booked the, they used that website to book their wedding. But I also got work through that website where they weren't even using that com our company to do their wedding. They'd hired another company, but they still got using that website, found me because they liked my photography. Right. You know, so I'm well, all about I think you're exactly have, as right. many, have as many tentacles out there. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I, I agree that, you know, our corporate site or, you know, our business um, photography had a uh, website. It's, it, they don't want to look at families and babies and weddings and they don't want to look at that. If they right. need a headshot, they really need a headshot. And so I think it's important that if they go there, that's what they're seeing. You know what well, I mean? They, they don't want to mess around. When I was yes. first starting out, they said, if you want to be a photographer, you want to specialize, you want to specialize. And I was like, but I don't want to specialize. <laughs> <laughs> I get yes. bored if I do the same thing all the time. I want to do everything. And so then I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll specialize by having a separate website for, right. you know, for those different things. And I think you're right. If you're, if, you're, if you're somebody, if you're an executive assistant who is looking for someone to do headshots for all the doctors in your office, right. you, you know, you, the baby stuff is, you're going to think, well, no, no, I want a professional. He's headshot. not serious about headshots. Yeah, what I want to, I want to in my opinion. Nothing, yeah, nothing yeah. but headshots. And it's the same thing if it's weddings or anything else, having a headshot, you know, Agreed. having a site that's dedicated just to that. I also own barmitzvatampa.com. There you go. <laughs> so, there you go. You know, so, and it's completely dedicated to bar mitzvahs. Uh, and it's a lot of work to maintain them all. And I fall down on it all the time. Oh, I, I, it makes me tired just thinking about it because I have so much work to do on my headshot, my, my website. I, but I'm so dumb about that stuff. Like that's just not in my wheelhouse at all. So right. I ignore it to death because I'm just not good at it. So I have actually, I have a, my Trevor, I, I have hired somebody just to make me get this, this done. Cause if not, I'm not going to do it. You know that, and I preach, I mean, how often do I preach pick a lane, you know, outsource, but for some reason I just didn't want to let that piece go, but I, I can't, I just can't, I, I'm not good at it and it's not getting done. So case right. in point. My wife's Let's the same see. way. She can't stand yeah. to do it. So with her business, she just hires people to do it for. There you go. And she has a great online business. So you, yeah. you probably, yeah. Hi, Marnie. It's so good to hear from you. Marnie said, Aim, you, you can't hear me, but I'm yelling amen all over the place. I think she was talking about like having that community of photographers and friends to chat with. And then Kimberly Oker, uh, she said, yes, her specialty is bar and bat mitzvahs and it keeps her working nonstop. And then you almost always get to photograph the weddings later. Have you yes. been, I'm sure you're at that place. I have not had it happen yet. I'm, I've been waiting desperately. I've done senior photos, but, but um, I think probably the oldest bar mitzvah client I have is probably 22 now. Okay, so that's young. 13. Right, yeah, yeah. That's, so young. that's still good. They're in there in college. So it hasn't happened, but any day, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for that call where, where a boy or a girl who I photographed at 13 calls me and says, I'm getting married and will you shoot my wedding? And I'm, I'm way too excited about it. I, well, I remember when it happened with us because we're, so we're 26 years in. So obviously right. it's happened, but, um, and they are some of my favorite weddings. And there again, it's like when you talk about, you go to somebody's bar bat mitzvah, like I get so excited when we have the third or fourth kids bar bat mitzvah, because it's like going home. Like, I feel like yes. part of the family. I'm like the most yes. Catholic Jewish person you've ever met. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like there, I mean, I, a lot of my clients are like, I had no idea you weren't Jewish. And I'm like, well, yeah. On, sometimes on Saturdays and Sundays I am because I'm in temple board that I'm in my own church. Yeah. But, um, you know, because there, it is, it's just such an incredibly tight group and community and I love it. And the weddings are even more fun because, Oh my God. Yes. You know, I've done, everybody I've done Jewish weddings, but I've never, I've never done one for a, for a former client. Yeah. And, yeah it's and, great. 
And at least they know you. You do the bar mitzvah, and then you do the senior photos, and then you do yeah. the headshots, and then you do the family portraits. And now you're in. You're now yeah. that family. Your family. Your family. Yeah. And you'll get you'll get their kids and their grandkids. And I had mm -hmm. one family where I, the grandparents in that family, I photographed them more than I photographed my own parents, because oh, they had. Yes. I, it was two sisters. And each one of those sisters had three kids. And I okay. did all the bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs for all six of them. And so I took the grandparents' pictures because they were at every one, every one yes. of those events. And so I took those. And it got to where, like, like the fifth time, I was like, oh, you again. <laughs> you know? Oh, like, I love it. But like, isn't that hey. fun? Yeah, like, hey, Boo Ray, how you doing? I'm like, yeah, let's take your picture again. It's like every year, or sometimes twice a year, I was photographing these grandparents. And it was wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. It's one of the wonderful this. things about our, about our business that you don't get. Uh, in a lot of other businesses is that you get to like when I do a wedding and then I have them come in and I go through all the wedding images with them I really don't have to do that I could just send right. them those images I don't do any sales right there I've usually already right. sold them on the album and I do the album selection images I don't do it in person so there's really no reason for them to come in and spend an hour with me looking through all of their wedding images except that I want to ask them questions about the people in the pictures like I'm, I'm I want to go through and go okay this guy who is this guy and what was he you know oh that's my uncle Larry right. and he's always crazy and he, because now I've been so moved into their family for that whole seven hours that now I really want to learn about them and know about them and be a part of them and they get to tell the stories and they get to laugh and it's also a great way by judging their reactions to find out what you do that people really really love and what yeah. you do, because oh that's so true you'd be surprised at how much of what you think is your signature work is not the stuff that people like the most i know you know when you do portraits that's not necessarily the case but with the events you'll spend so much time trying to get that perfect unbelievable beautiful bridal portrait and then it's that snapshot you took at the reception when she was laughing with her friend from high school that she comes to tears over Oh, you're so right. And no, let me also no. give you something. It never is your competition images. <laughs> no. I, mean, I mean, we think that in the beginning and then I'm like, no, that's really no. not what they want. You're right. It's no. those little precious moments and the it things isn't. that incredibly look, you know, more, I don't know, that are just, that, that means so much. Those just little tiny things. That's exactly right. I don't want to like, people are like blowing up the chat. And I know I've forgotten half the people. Jeff White asks, um, and we may have covered this, Jeff, but that they're also event photographers and they're trying to pivot to family and portraits. Any good ideas on how you could pivot um, to family portraits? Uh, pivoting to family work. portraits is tricky. I don't do that many of them. I do some. Um, and Mary, you can back me up with this. The thing about family portraits is I, I think if you want to make a living in family portraits, you really have to go after the right clientele. Yes. And Mary knows this, I'm sure, more than anybody, is that your average middle-class family isn't sitting around thinking, you know what, let's spend $1,500 on a portrait for the living room. Right. You know, you, you, right. you've got to go after the clients who, for whom $1,500 is absolutely no problem. The amount of money I would spend for something that's going to go on my wall. Right. You know, or $2,000 or $3,000 or $5,000 for something that's been hand painted or, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So your first clue to go after, I, and you, you should be answering this question, not me, is you've got to de determine who your clientele is and then you've got to go after them exclusively. You've got to zero in on that clientele. It's one yes. of the reasons that you see so many people who do family portraits uh, do a lot of charity auctions. Yes, exactly. A lot of charity auctions and a lot of silent auctions because that's where that clientele is. People who are paying $200 to go to a charity event so they can then donate $1,000 to a charity, those are the people that are going to buy the $2,500, $4,000 portrait for their home. Yeah. yeah. I would recommend if you want to get into family portraits, two things. Number one, um, go back into the Think Tank webinars and listen to when I chatted with our friend Jeff Shaw, another Floridian. I was, just, I was just about to say Jeff Shaw. Jeff has a ratio thing. Oh. I had him on my podcast five years ago. And Genius. Uh, he has a ratio thing that he asked him about it sometime that he, what's his ratio for how much money do you, like if you're putting it into a event, how much money does it cost to go to the event determines how much money of a gift certificate you offer and what you offer for he has like this ratio this mathematical formula for exactly how he prices that stuff when he's going into those events and there's Genius. something i love more than a good formula and a very handsome man oh, very yeah. very handsome oh, man great ah, very i felt i felt quite quite un, unpresentable when he was he was on the and i was like i mean everything his eyes are piercing yeah. his everything's perfect and i'm like huh 
Okay. You're prettier it must, than me. It must, it must also be very <laughs> uncomfortable to be on this with me then. <laughs> It is. I feel the same way. It literally must be choking. you Floridians. You're literally choking <laughs> when it I make that suggestion. It must be people in Florida. The other suggestion is, you know, check out the Business Success Academy that Ronan and his son, Jonathan, have started. Lots of great information there, but check it out because it's got some great stuff. Um, we are going to just flat out run out of time here. Let me try. Fred Ashley also love the photo booth idea. I saw it on your web website. Does it lead to added business? Uh, the photo booth? Yes. Yes, absolutely. The photo booth uh, came about because I was doing some weddings and bar mitzvahs and they had photo booths. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's photography based and I'll be damned if someone else is going to make exactly. money off of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At my event. If it's mm -hmm. photography based, they, could, they should be able to get it from me. So I uh, built a photo booth and I say built, it's not built. All it is, it's a portrait station with a printer. So yeah. I bring in a, I bring in a, a backdrop or a step and repeat, uh, one light and a photographer with a camera and a high speed die sub print, printer. My old one is that big box back there. Yeah. And, um, and I wanted to make, and I wanted to distinguish my booth from other booths. Cause I'm always about, I want to, you know, there's a million photo booths out there. They yes. come in and they set up that little thing and you get the little strip and it looks horrible. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to compete against them because they're going to be willing to do it for a zero, zero price. So, so what am I going to offer? So my photo booth is big four by six prints with a custom border on it and good lighting and an actual photographer. And that's how I sell it. So when people come in for the weddings or whatever, I show them these big prints and I say, uh, these are refrigerator worthy. That's what I say. I go, oh, I love of, that. I go at the end of an event, you'll find those strips all over the floor, but you'll never find one of my pictures on the floor after your party's over because people take right. them home and put them on the refrigerator. They're refrigerator worthy. And, um, and now I'm thinking about, you know, when we get through this, segueing away from paper products and segueing into a product where you get a picture and it's sent straight to your phone. Yeah. Because the kids today at the bar mitzvahs and stuff, they don't want the paper thing so much. The parents want that. They think it's a great gift to have, yeah. but the kids don't. They want it in their phone. That's so great. that will be the next step that I make. And someone else, I think he also asked, I saw in the questions, he also asked about my pricing for headshots. And yes, yes. I, I price individual and I price group. So I okay. have... Um, and I charge to come on location a certain amount and then I charge per head for each file that I deliver. But if you want a lot of stuff done, you can pay a half day rate for me or a whole day rate for me. And I will just shoot until I drop. Okay. So that's and then how, how I, do you deliver? And did you count the deliverable? So like I, we talked to Tony, I think, was it last week? I talked to Tony, but cause obviously he does a lot of commercial, but do you charge? So when you do a half day or full day rate, how do you handle the deliverables? Is it, so many or you know what i'm saying like well no I, if i do a half day rate what i did was and this and this is me and i'm, well, I'm sure there are people out there who go oh no you could be making so much more money <laughs> but what helped me a lot was some years ago i sat down and i said how much do i want to make per hour there you go let's let's determine how much money i want to make per hour when i am working so mm -hmm. i determined what that amount was and now I stay within that range on almost anything that I do, be it a wedding, be an event, be it portraits. I try to figure it so that I'm going to make a minimum of X amount per hour. And for me, like with a wedding, I want to make at least $350 an hour while I'm on site. So that's where, I'm, that's where I set my base. And for something like headshots, say $300 an hour when I'm on site. So if you want to bring me in for four hours to shoot everybody in your company or whatever, then $1,200, I'll come in, shoot everybody in your company, they'll all pick their pictures and I'll deliver them, done. There you go. They're not gonna be retouched. Right. It's a bulk rate. Now, okay. if you wanna retouch, I'm gonna charge extra for that. Okay, um, that's what I was wondering. So, so you're charging, so did you hear that everybody? He's charging extra to do the artwork. Yes. That's a yes. very important no, if piece. No, if I'm doing bulk, if I'm doing bulk, literally, I, like I said, I'll have the thing set up to deliver that day, that, the, instantly. Because right. I, wanna be, I wanna be done with that job when I leave. Mm -hmm. So if I yeah. go in and I set up my little thing and I've got my water bottle and people go, oh, great, turn this way. Oh, thank you. Click on oh, next. Da, da. And it's never like that. It's never an assembly. It's never a four hour assembly line. It's, you know, right. it's 15 people. It's 20 people. Right. And they pay me and I'm out the door and that's it. That job's done. Yeah. You know? Then I'm, I'm okay with that rate. Uh, and agree. if you want me to come in and do three or four or five people, then it's going to be an individual rate. And do you ever do any, offer any branding as well? So that, like companies that say, can you come in and do, I think we have 15 headshots, two groups, and then we'd like some branding images. Yes. 
Yeah, that's all. She would offer that too. Kind of one. Like when I was okay. doing, I did Moen, uh, you know, the people who make faucets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like they had a sales convention here. So I came in for two days. I set up two stations and I photographed all their salespeople and had them get their shots right there, delivered instantly to them. And then I did the event photography on their award ceremony. That there night. you go. So I came yeah. in and did four hours on their work. And that, and that's a nice two day job that, yeah. you know, <laughs> that it can, can be a two weeks of income or three weeks of income. A lot less tear, wear and tear than a wedding or a bar and bar mitzvah. Oh Not my that God, I don't yes. love them, but I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, and there's lots of ways to make money on volume too, that, you know, I mean, when I was, people say, oh my gosh, you've shot 500 weddings. I'm thinking, yeah, I've shot 500 weddings, but 400 of those weddings were an hour long. Yeah. Florida weddings are different too. Yeah. Because yeah. I did, Especially I on did the beach. destination for years. I did destination weddings and I was doing a hundred destination weddings a year. I literally did not meet the people until after they were married. I right. would, I would be, they would come down the aisle. I would shoot the ceremony. And then after I was like, hi, I'm your photographer. Let's do your group pictures. And the whole thing start to finish was an hour. There you go. Very and, different, very different thing. Yeah. And there was no, there was, and, and that's another thing. It's all about time in and, and how much time you spend to make the money that you make. Because even someone like Mary, who is a high end portrait artist and people go, Oh my gosh, I can't believe Mary that you make so much money off of one portrait. And Mary will tell you the amount of work that she has to do before and after the sale to get the client, make the client happy, make the client feel special, follow up with the client, market with the client, pay someone to do her website, blah, blah, blah. She don't make, you know, $2,500 off that client. After she pays all of the expenses, she probably makes what I make. Right. <laughs> probably a little that. more. But, <laughs> I don't know about that, but, but, yeah. but you're all right. It's there, you know, to get a lead, the cost to generate a lead is, is cost. Yes. You know? yeah. And you may only spend $5 and I'm spending $50. It's all yeah. relative is what you're saying. So yes, I was amazed. Bonin, I was amazed to find out that I had a year where I made half as much money as the year before and took home the same amount of money. I, they, and there you go. And because you're watching your numbers and we, did I miss any questions, Ronan? You haven't, Mary. You've covered okay. them all. Okay. I want to make sure we tell people where they can get more Boo Ray Perry because this hour has like flown by. So Boo Ray has an amazing YouTube channel. I don't know if you guys want to um, check that out. And Boo Ray, if you want to put it in the link, I don't know. Can you do that? Like I might can. can. Type it in. Again, if you want to find me, all you have to do is go to Google and type in Boo Ray. Right. And there we you'll go. Right. There we you'll go. Find, you'll find everything there is to find about me. I have a YouTube Great channel. YouTube channel. He's a, a speaker and educator, but he's got an amazing podcast. As we're going to say, uh, as Gavin video. checked out his podcast with uh, Gary Hughes. Please check them out there. Next, they're my second favorite podcast. Yes. <laughs> we will definitely check it out. Podcast until she got her own. This is true. <laughs> But I still love it. I love you and Gary both are very entertaining and offer a lot of great information. It's very different from from our podcast. It's they're actually a perfect little combo. <laughs> yes, because your podcast is more uh, is more about actually helping people with their photography business, and our podcast is more about goofing off. So that's <laughs> it's perfect. It's a perfect balance. Yeah. In my if opinion. you want to learn something, you go to Mary's podcast. <laughs> you know, if you want to have a, a pint of Guinness and not really pay much attention, you go to my podcast. Yeah, or do both what you should do yeah, or do you both should, you need go. a boat all right ronan if i didn't miss right. anything i'll appreciate that I, I, I was trying to keep up no you you kept up with everything mary and thank you so much Blue Ray. and just to just to just to comment on the guinness right you oh, said it's better to be liked than to be good yes so if you want a good pint of guinness you gotta come to ireland and then you like it too I listen promise. as soon as they lift the uh, quarantine I, you bring me and i'm coming okay. i've been wanting, yeah. i've been wanting to go to ireland my whole life i have been wanting to go to ireland i'm, I'm, I'm a photo what photographer doesn't want to go to ireland uh, so, so i'm there buddy i'm there any minute and and you put me there for three or four days and i will learn to love guinness i promise you will you will you just and then, and then like then I'm surprised because you said coming in, oh, sure, I know nothing about marketing. What am I doing here? I'm really concerned. You know, and normally I have three tips that people gave. We've already given you one of them, but I have four <laughs> more. So for some, and, and one of them even has three parts to it. So the next one is the power of the network, you know, and Bure talked about the fact that when you go to your conventions and you connect with other photographers, they will bring you business. So don't yes. be afraid to share with your fellow photographer. Build yeah. your network of photographers as well as your network for your clients. And the bit I really loved, because I see this all the time, we're about to embark on a building project in our garden to put some offices down there, right? <laughs> because of the new reality. And we're enjoying so much actually working from home. Yeah. So, but I've sent out so many inquiries. And not only do people not haven't responded so many of them, I've had two out of 10 companies respond. 
But what Bure started talked about was the speed of the response and how important that is. You know, the sooner you get back to the client, the more likely you are to close that sale. Oh, this is especially true with corporate stuff because, you know, your boss says, oh, get somebody who do headshots. You're going to send out the first person that responds is, is, is probably going to get that job because they want to move on. They just, you know, they want to get this task off the desk and move on to the next thing. So if, so, and I can't tell you how many photographers will wait 24 hours to get back to a potential job. What are you doing? I mean, you get back to it right away. It's so important. And so many people have already got on and they've spent a fortune on GoDaddy.com buying up URLs. Yes, they are. (laughs) Ingenious. You know, headshot on your city name dot com. And there's people gone off and they're buying all they're buying up the weddings at Tampa dot com and every other city in the world. So yeah, I own, I own Tampa wedding photographer. You all the Tampa ones that are bought. <laughs> yeah, I own Tampa wedding photographer. I own uh, headshot Tampa dot com. I own bar mitzvah Tampa dot com. Um, because anytime I got a chance to grab them, I grab them. So we should have had an affiliate link to godaddy.com here that we could have posted for you to say when you're going to buy these guys, use this affiliate link. <laughs> well, well, thank you so much. It was absolutely amazing. Thanks for having Great me. Conversation. And uh, thank you so much again. Thank Thanks you for much. having me. Thanks, guys. It was great. Love you. See y'all later. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. Thanks Stay for safe. joining us. Stay healthy. Take